Kenny V in Hong Kong wanted a, a song, so I wrote a song for him, and that was my first song, commercial song. Such nice kids you are. You were. <laughs> I was a kid. George passed me some of the songs, in fact all the songs, yesterday night. That was the first time I heard you guys. I almost broke down and cried. God, I'm so proud of you guys. One of the joys of life is when anybody, you know, you, know, you can find your gifts. And it's not just one gift. It's all the gifts that are clustered together in one place, right? It's there for a purpose. Okay, I'm going to take you to a very special place. Okay, very special. Okay. Like my good friend, George, we all took up electron organ from young. The electron organ being such a versatile instrument, you can be playing jazz, rock, pop, classical even. These are five strings, because I've been changing for 20 years. I don't want to change for 20 years. What, what band was that? Rubber band. <laughs> <laughs> hey, why you broke up with the stretch tooth then? <laughs> we broke up. The question I always ask myself and the people that I work with, right? What can you bring there? If you want to go into a certain space and do something, find the relevant parts of your artistry to bring to that space. Now the living legend is right. In front of you, Jonathan Coach, Xu Hua Chang Lao Si. Thank you. Thank you. When I met you, it was around the time uh, you started recording as well. I think I went to the studios when I was around 17. You and Andrew were so green there. Eh? But such nice kids you are. You were. <laughs> I was a kid. Yes, that's, that's how long it was. You had such a colorful. Um, music career from even before you went to recording i remember you were a rock star right with the band <laughs> what, what what band was that rubber band <laughs> <laughs> no it was typhoon yeah after that was typhoon yeah after that was typhoon rubber band uh, it was before it? that was rubber band oh, oh, i thought yeah, it was a yeah, joke yeah. <laughs> no really then people ask me hey, why you broke up with the stretch tooth then <laughs> yeah, we broke up okay uh, george passed me some of the songs in fact all the songs yesterday night it was the first time I heard you guys. I almost broke down and cried. God, I'm so proud of you guys. We need a furtherance of original songwriting in Singapore. There was always this love of songwriting ever since I was like 18 years old. I bought a four-track recorder and started writing my own songs. It didn't amount to much, but I thought some of them were pretty good. Yeah, but it didn't come to a, any commercial value until many years later when I was in the studio recording where I presented a song to Ocean Butterfly because uh, Kenny V in Hong Kong wanted a, a song, so I wrote a song for him, and that was my first song, commercial song. And from there, it just kind of like mushroom <laughs> blossom out into some other stuff. Like. Music is life to me. Music is the air that I breathe. I just cannot function without music. I think good music will make you feel nostalgic in many ways. Sometimes when I hear songs, even some of the modern songs, it will take me back to a certain time. And I love ballads, I'm a sucker for ballads. So good music for me is a portal for me to be in a good place. It's therapeutic, it helps to heal you in many ways. Other from the fact that they are talented, artists that are more relational to guys like us. Some of us call us the backing band, we are the side men. Most of us are like sessionists who does concerts and all that. But when we are embarked on a tour, especially a long tour, we become more like a band than anything else. So I, I'm more impressed with artists that treats us like part of his or her band, rather than being someone who is a bit uh, detached from us. So when I mean detached, it means that they go, don't go out with us, they don't talk to us. There are artists like that. I, I play with some of them. Nothing bad about it because everyone has his or her own ways. I don't think anyone can just become a star like that. That's why the star is born. As a singer-songwriter, you have to evolve through a periods of time of crafting your trade. The more songs you write, the better your songs become. The more you perform, the better you become at performance. The more you sing, the better you get. So it's all about time. And time is on their side because you're also young. All my life, I always said to myself that there's no such thing as no, you can't do that. I'm always a rebel. That if you tell me no, I'll do it. Not only would I do it, but I would do it better than anyone else. <laughs> I try that, I try that. Sometimes I feel flat on my face, fall flat on my face, don't matter. 
because of our intake of uh, many genres of music, especially from the West. Australia has their own brand of music. Even in America, you have the East Coast and the West Coast. So there's a whole lot of genres of music that we kind of like take it all in. And that's what forged that, that kind of musical influence that we had as, as young musicians starting out. That, I guess, what makes us uh, really uh, very different from other musicians in, in general in Asia. And that's also why uh, in the early 80s that the Taiwanese actually came down to Singapore to record a whole lot of albums because they just wanted and they liked the sound that we can produce in Singapore. There used to be a trend where local artists or local songwriters had to go over to Taiwan or China to make it big and then come back. Why is it so? I mean, why, why does it have to be that way? The population in Singapore still buy albums, but we buy predominantly Western or foreign artists and not local artists. It's a question that we need to ask ourselves, why are we not supporting our own acts? Do it well. I mean, it's very easy. Uh, it's like, you know, it's a very simple phrase, but if you think about it, not only do you do it, but you do it well, beyond 100%. Impress not only the judges, not the audience, but impress yourself.我现在要带你去一个地方一个很神秘的地方好你准备好了吗好我准备好了好我们去吧好好好好好好好好好好好好好好好好好好好好好好好好好好好好好好好好好好好好好好好好好好好好好好好好好好好好好好好好好好好好
It's just like Singaporean going to China to sell Singapore pop. It's very difficult. Unless you know exactly what you're trying to do and you keep honing it and you just keep on being creative about it. Amongst the 10 songs, they're all good. Uh, they're all strong in the way it's been written. But this one, this one song, I like the whole flow. I find it's quite complete. That was a demo, right? Yeah. Kind of like the way you sang it. It sounds like the uh, voice suit the song. La. The mood was well created in the demo. But the listener given only one chance sometimes. Yeah. So they must impress, they must score very high points the moment they hear it. I find when you uh eat ting fuka, you eat it, they see it down, for example, you get what I mean? Uh, so that shape, you know, it's too big. So, so you got to bring everyone that, you know, I'm going to saw, I'm going to saw. Still, at the end of the day, you'll be the first singer of the song. So you're such a girl, so she will be water, you know, that kind of thing, you know. From young, I love music. At the age of maybe four, five, six, according to my parents, I got a drumstick, the chopstick, not drumstick, and start begging on all the cushions at home. You know, I treated everything as a, a musical percussion at home. I love drumming from the start. Nothing else but my parents, especially my dad, thought I was just being a nuisance. And he said, why do you learn something else, you know, like play the keyboard, the piano, or, or something else. And then they enrolled me in Yamaha Music School. Yamaha Music School was my second home that time of my life. So much so that I actually missed one school exam, examination day one, one time in secondary two. I reached school really late because I was in Yamaha playing music, you know. Like my good friend, George, we all took up electron organ from young. The electron organ being such a versatile instrument, you can be playing jazz, rock, pop, classical even. And I think that was the best start. And slowly but surely, that became part of my life, you know, playing music. As a musician, I enjoy working with singers who have so full, deep voices. But over the years, I've been in this industry for so long, right? I appreciate a good singer comes with passion, discipline, and very prepared. Yeah, it comes with the right attitude and spirit. It'll make the whole working atmosphere a lot more fun. That's where I find um, yep, magic is created. Singapore being so cosmopolitan, I I don't find we are very distinctive in, in our musical culture. We are so international. We are pretty much quite a good Michelin star Roja in Singapore, lah, <laughs> if I may put it that way. And we are able to bring all this culture together. There's so much great music out there. Never stop listening and embracing what you hear in the market. Like for example, a film scoring arranger, Ricky Ho. He's my sufu, you know, and I'm a big fan of his work. Those days when he was doing uh, orchestration and uh, arrangement in studios, I'm always waiting for the session to end and take his charts and study the charts. I think that's where I learn a lot. For aspiring musicians, artists, you're pretty much on your own to create your sound, create your identity. You go a long way if you never stop in pursuing all these materials. Yeah.